So today I want to show you these original lab research papers about magnesium and sleep with a special emphasis on infants. Now again, when I just was first married, I had severe magnesium deficiency and a number of health problems from that. And one of those problems was sleep. I had sleeping problems. A lot of people today do. And a lot of people also have magnesium deficiency in our culture. That's the first thing you should do. Somebody on front, one of my Facebook friends today was just asking about their sleep problem. And that's the first thing that people should be looking into is magnesium, supplement magnesium. In the European Journal of Pediatrics in 1980, I have here a paper called Serum Magnesium Level and Sleep Behavior of Newborn Infants. Magnesium is definitely involved in sleep. And in the introduction of this paper, they say the use of magnesium for treating seizures has been known for a long time. And they footnote 1914 is the citation there. Seizures, because your brain, your nerves, your muscles, all that interaction, magnesium is involved there. But moving on to the sleep. Polygraphic studies were performed in 14 full-term newborns. Polygraphs, that's the same type of test, like a lie detector test, where they measure your blood pressure, your pulse, your breathing, and your skin conductivity. Those four things. Polygraph. And they measured sleep behavior. Sleep behavior of the infants was correlated to the serum magnesium level. It was correlated. More specifically, they found with increasing serum magnesium, quiet sleep was increased, whereas active sleep decreased, restless sleep. Um, so in other words, the quality of sleep was better when there was more magnesium. After magnesium injection, they literally injected these infants with, mag with magnesium, quiet sleep increased and active sleep decreased even more. Okay, so yeah, you can inject magnesium and enhance your sleep. You don't have to go that far. You can just supplement magnesium. It's fine. But the fact is, it's clearly involved in sleep. 1980. Let's move forward. Journal in into 2004, the Journal of the American College of Nutrition. This paper is called New Data on the Importance of Gestational Magnesium Deficiency. And I really appreciate this study and some of the discussion here. So I'm going to read quite a bit of this page. Chronic primary magnesium deficiency is frequent. They start by saying, yeah, we know that, we talked about that. But get this. Women particularly have low intakes. That's a new addition. Wow. Magnesium deficiency during pregnancy can induce fetal consequences that might last throughout life. This is lifelong impact we're talking about. And they add premature, label, premature labor can give rise to preterm birth from magnesium deficiency. There's a lot of things going on here. And magnesium can, deficiency can contribute to the sudden infant death. SIDS, that's what I'm, one of the things I want to focus on here. SIDS, sudden infant death, may be a fetal consequence, they say, of maternal magnesium deficiency through impaired control of brown adipose tissue thermal regulation. Brown fat. What is brown fat? Well, scientists consider brown fat good fat. And that's because it simply burns a lot of energy. It, it, has a high level of metabolism and it does that brown fat burns energy by essentially allowing protons into the mitochondria and then pumping them back out and then allowing them in and pumping them out and allowing them in etc a futile cycle it's kind of like revving an engine but not actually going anywhere it just generates a lot of heat so it burns a lot of energy without creating ATP without doing anything and it's brown fat is found up here, of course, by the brain. And especially it's in high levels in infants because they don't move around a lot. So they have to be able to regulate their temperature using, you know, metabolic internal regulation in their body. And this is really interesting to me that brown fat is connected to sleep, which is also connected to magnesium. Um, and I mean, of course we know, and we'll have to go through this in some future paper, some future episode, 
because sleep and temperature are closely linked. But anyways, the, this paper goes on to say nutritional magnesium supplements might be for preventative of SIDS, sudden infant death, preventative. And then they talk about stress for babies. Now, when you think of stress, when I think of stress, we usually think of it differently than the way scientists think of it. Scientists consider eating to be stress, a stressor. It's a stressor on your body. It talks about here how parental smoking is a stressor for infants, but also lying down. Just lying prone can be stressful for the baby, it says in this paper. So in other words, these stressors, things like lying prone, can also increase the risk for sudden infant death. Um, so let's move along. Magnesium Research 2005. This paper is called The Relationship Between Magnesium Levels in Drinking Water and Sudden Infant Death Syndrome more precisely looking into this and I'm just going to read the conclusion here and it says quote there is a significant trend toward a decreased risk of SIDS sudden infant death with increasing magnesium levels in drinking water there's decreased risk of sudden infant death when there's more magnesium and by the way that study looked at 500 infants that had died of sudden infant death in their drinking water, and then they looked at over 500 infants that had died of other causes and looked at that drinking water. Magnesium was clearly involved, it's clearly correlated. So that's, that's fascinating to me. Let's look at one final paper, as long as we're on the topic of sudden infant death. This is 2015, it's in a journal called Medical Hypotheses, and it's called Sudden Infant Death Syndrome and Abnormal Metabolism of Thiamine. So that's just one other thing I want to add here. They talk about, you know, again, they talk about stressful incidents and marginal brain metabolism, you know, contributing to sudden infant death. And then this whole argument of how the baby should be, whether they should be flat on their stomach or on their back. And they say that's an inf insufficient explanation for sudden infant death. But they also want to include the association of thiamine and magnesium. All right. Now, thiamine, what, what about that? Well, a thiamine is also known as vitamin B1. It's an essential nutrient. You can't make it in your body. You have to eat it. And it's found highly in grains and meat. But if you're a vegetarian who doesn't eat a lot of grains, this is important to know. So that's why I wanted to bring it up. So most importantly, you should know about magnesium and sudden infant death and sleep. But also just have in the back of your mind, recognize that thiamine is also an important factor. And... You should be supplementing both of these things if you're pregnant, but even if you're not pregnant, you want to have good sleep, you want to focus on magnesium supplementing.